Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Dufa. I'm from the African Centre for Cities and this is... Nix McLean, I'm a queer researcher person <laughs> um, and I am associated with Rhodes University. And today we will be dreaming of the smart queer city. First off, to just kind of kick off this section um, or this kind of case study section, um, very informally, um, we did have a kind of set of guiding questions that we could um, feed off of. And the first one was, what is queerness? I think for me, queerness is ultimately about disrupting power, engaging with alternative ways of doing things, building alternative structures, um, and dreaming beyond what we currently have. From my side as well, queerness uh, is quite radical and alternative to the status quo norms of society of yeah. um, what traditionally kind of takes place um, in people's lives. It's quite subjective and relational and I think that maybe it's not something that we can define um, but rather come close to a definition but leave it open for people to interpret for themselves. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. I also think what's really important to point out is that Queerness is often uh, conflated with sexuality, mm. and I think it's really important to move it beyond that, to think about it in terms of other identities, but also just simply about doing things differently, yeah. disrupting power structures, and what we're doing now is dreaming of other ways of being. And I think that's a good segue into kind of our next question, um, mm. or next thing to talk about, which is we've sat and thought about a queer smart city, but also a smart queer city and maybe we could now unpack the differences of what we think or dream about what those two different kind of maybe concepts could mean i think it's difficult because i mean you know it's queer smart city and then smart queer city and it's where we place the emphasis yeah. so if we're looking at uh so i'm just going to talk about both of them for a bit Please. if we're talking about queer smart city we're talking about queering the smart city mm -hmm. and if we're talking about smart queer city we're talking about smarting <laughs> the queer city and it's about where that that falls. Um, and maybe querying the smart city right now is querying what we currently have, our current conceptualizations, um, and maybe the smart queer city is about the dreaming. Mm -hmm. You know, what does a queer city look like? How do we build that? I have kind of a similar understanding um, or idea behind these two kind of concepts that, that you do as well. And I really like the idea of the smart queer city as kind of flipping everything over and dreaming about the alternative mm. possibilities that can emerge as opposed to the queer smart city, which is applying a queer lens to mm. what we already have, or what the current smart city discourse is tending yeah. to take place to be. And do you think mm. that they could exist at the same time? The querying the smart city and the smart queer city? I think so. Like, you know, are they transferring learnings at the same time or how mm. are we building that? Or can we play with them at the same time while we go about the streaming? I think they do maybe intersect and overlap quite a lot. And for me, like the latter, the smart queer city, um, maybe that also embodies some kind of like um, initiatives of things that are taking place in physical space as well. Because I think that's what comes to mind for me when I think mm. of, of the smart queer city in that there are things that people are doing that are queer in um, this discourse of technology mm. and digitalization. Um, happening in cities and maybe it is those kind of small activations or initiatives that are being done that kind of fits into the second part of that the second concept so i think maybe it's this is where we use queering in the sense of it as mm. troubling and disruptive so that's mm. where we trouble our current conceptualization of the smart city and how do we unpack that and how we dream of a different way um and maybe then that is what transfers to the smart queer city nice. is the learnings from the disruption as it currently is and using that to map or conceptualize or reimagine yeah. different ways of being. Oh. Perfect. And I think it also leaves a lot of room open for people who, for the audience who are also listening to this, to also maybe do some reflection um, themselves in terms of what mm -hmm. they think that the smart queer city or the queer smart city should be, if yeah. I said the same thing twice now. No, you got it, you got great, it. <laughs> great, great <laughs> stuff. In kind of our cities, mm. safety is quite a pertinent um, topic as well. So I think we could also maybe unpack um, safe spaces or queer safe mm. spaces both digitally and physically. Absolutely. And um, yeah. I think that also kind of shows up in your work as well, Nix. Yeah, that's shown up in my, my work on digital safe spaces primarily. Um, and I'm starting to do some work on the online to offline 
and offline to online. But I think what's really important, um, so we give you a question, is like mm -hmm. what, what do we mean by safe? Um, but I do think it is both physical and also psycho psychological as mm -hmm. well um, in terms of how you feel in a space, um, but whether that space is actually conducive yeah. to your safety as a queer person as well. It's quite liberating to actually enter that space where other people are like you. Yeah, um, and absolutely. I'm sure that's also the experience yeah. digitally as well, where if you don't have access to a physical safe space, you may be able to access community digitally online. And I think that's where the importance of platforms come in. A lot of my research currently I, is on the online. So as you said, people move online when their physical spaces aren't safe or they don't have other people in their community. So in particular, I found that with, with trans people, so trans, non-binary and gender diverse people, um, and so my current study is in Botswana, Rwanda, South Africa, and Uganda. And so what they then do is they create safe spaces. Um, but it's what we talk about safety. So there's the idea that you're safe as a person with other mm. people. Yeah. Um, but the platform itself might not be safe mm. in terms of what kind of data is it extracting about you? Who's it selling that data to? Um, are you fully aware of what the platform uses or how the platform uses your data? Who's able to infiltrate those spaces? Yeah. Um, and what's really fantastic I've seen with, with WhatsApp groups and with Facebook groups is that they close those groups and people then self-monitor. It does put the risk of gatekeeping, obviously, in, okay. into play. Mm -hmm. But you see groups going, I know this person, I will vouch for them, and they're into, into the space. Or another group, for instance, might ask questions like, how do you understand gender? So, so there is that kind of... We need to be thinking of things differently mm -hmm. um, and thinking about how we talk about safety and, and help people be safe. I don't think people know enough about what's happening to their data um, and there aren't alternative infrastructures necessarily where they can move to. But I'd also then like to segue from safety also into an ethics of care, oh, yeah. which is something that I know is very close to your heart yeah. and your work as well. Um, and just speak about how we can perhaps practice an ethics of care when it comes to um, I don't know, queerness and both digital and physical space. So I'd just like to ask you as well how sure. ethics of care shows up in your work and maybe what the the benefits or what the the practices of ethics of care can be and translate into our experiences or our dreams mm -hmm. of the queer smart city, the smart queer city. Sure. Um, <laughs> in terms of ethics of care, I think about it as care responsibility. So think about the individual as well. Like, so how am I in the world? Am I taking care of myself as a researcher, for instance? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a trans non-binary person, mm -hmm. and I've just done a lot of research on online gender-based violence, and I've had those experiences myself. Um, so I've had to think about vicarious trauma, uh, triggered kind of incidents as well, um, but also collective care. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we have different ways of thinking about that, which is yeah. would be great to explore. Um, so talking to my research partner, to my research participants, like how do we create safe spaces for ourselves, what does that care look like? We've had conversations about care not just being like cute and soft and fluffy, yeah. <laughs> but care is also about being critical, about holding each other accountable, mm. um, pointing out when we think people are not taking care of themselves mm. and obviously in a way that is not harmful. Yeah. So how do you say to somebody, I'm really concerned about you? Um, and then also something that's really important to me is ethics of care, I've been thinking a lot about safety. So digital safety, digital security. So with participants, for instance, um, using VPNs, um, how I store their data. Um, do they know how their data is stored? So mm. I, all of that I'm working in. What kind of passwords am I using? What kind of passwords are they using? Yeah. You know, and, and taking that into account as an actual practice of care.